Hey, what's up everyone? It's Rich. All right. Welcome to Tuesday. Render like right then. Dun dun dun. We're visiting, revisiting our uh, monster and Dr. Frankenstein piece. All right. So today I'm switching up the tools a little bit. I'm using the same nib that Wrightson used. This is a Gelat 291. I have a box of them here. I'll give you a little peeky poop. Um, these are vintage nibs from ye olden days. Um, you can find them pop up on eBay occasionally. I can't remember how much this box was. I bought 144. I might have actually bought two boxes. I come to play when I grab this stuff. Um, uh, and the ink that I'm using is um, Eon Vortex. Uh, this is the big bottle um, F5 black ink. All right, paper is just, I think, either Canson or Strathmore. It's like a two-ply Bristol. It's aight. And uh, yeah, the, I make playlists of these videos, so look in the description box below. You can follow me on Instagram. And uh, let's see how this nib goes. Right now it's not drawing lines. I'm going to put a little bit of water in my ink really fast. Just a touch. It's kind of like this is brand new. Um, I haven't inked yet this morning, so the ink uh, can be a little thick. And the bottle of ink that I'm using is a little bit older, so, um, you know, over time it'll kind of evaporate and sort of it thickens on its own things. So you can use a touch of water. Uh, interesting, so this nib is not wine drawn. All right, here we go. It's working. This will be interesting. I, I, I honestly can't remember if I've ever used one of these before. Look, it's a nice fine line. Daddy like already. Um, am I in camera? Yes. All right. Let's do this. Hope everyone's doing well. Patreon peeps, I just want to say hello. I love you all. All my YouTube family friends. Hello, hello. Wow, this nib is great. I don't know if I could actually use this on regular work, though. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but uh, the thing with the Gelat nibs, I'll just say up front, is um, that uh, there's different iterations of the nib. They make it still currently. So you can always uh, try those too, um, and they're they come with little holders and stuff like that, and you could give it a shot without having to dump a ton of money. I, I mean, honestly, like guitar guitar mania kind of goes like this too, where people get very very hung up on like vintage uh, stuff, and they'll you know like like the guitar to get is this one from 1959, and you know everything else is is just not as good. It's, I mean. It's one of those things where you could give the same players that use those something made modern day and they're still going to sound good. So it's the same with, with things. If it's if it's a good nib, it's a good nib. I mean, you, you know, they didn't have a magic wand back 30 or 40 years ago to make everything better. Um, but I, I get the allure of, you know, wanting to get vintage crack stuff. I don't even think that these are the exact vintage version that writes and used to be honest. Um, I, I, but I don't know that for a fact. There's, there's different metals that they used in different versions. This is a good nib though. I like it. I'm feeling it. Um, but anyway, and I've used the hunt one or two on this before. Um, and, uh, you know, real good hunt one or two will get nice lines. It's, this pen's fun though. It's, it's a little different for me. So hopefully everyone's doing well. It's, it's interesting jumping in this video because I was doing something completely different for the last like half hour and then I just like switched gears on a dime. I was like, all right, grab the rights in peace and you need to do your YouTube video. So it's, it's always interesting settling into this. It's like, it's quite, I mean, I don't know if challenging would be the right word, but um, hold on one second. I'm going to pause this for one second. Okay, I'm back. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's always interesting shifting gears, especially to go into something like this, because this is, I mean, you definitely, um, you know, you want to be paying attention on top of it. It's not something that I generally work on, so it's it's not like I've done, you know, six months of, like, rights and pieces or, or even um, worked on one yesterday, if it was, you know, like, like the consistency of it is Tuesdays or in the morning I pick up a pen and I kind of chop around on this for a bit um things to remember you know we don't create contours around stuff the contours are created by the lines so um, um 
as we get to the edges of things, what you want to do is you want whatever is touching is what kind of creates the exterior line and it just it makes the stuff look a bit better. There's a lot of noise going on in the living room right now. I'm like, what is going on out there? I heard something fall. Mm -mm. Um, what else is going on? Nothing much. I'm kind of like slowly turning back into a human um, and uh, working on Vampire Hunter D right now with Ryan. I had two pages that I had started like a month ago that I finished up over the last couple of days. And today I'm going to run down to my printer and print. Um, another I think six or seven pages he's about 20 pages ahead of me right now so but yeah so it was a kickstarter that they did uh, it's like a film company and somehow they got the rights to Vampire Hunter D I don't really know the whole story um, but uh, the original artist that they had that was attached to the kickstarter it took him a real long time to finish the first book and he had gotten ill or something like that and uh, they needed someone to actually do the project so Ryan stepped up and is helping him out, and then I'm helping Ryan out. Um, but I mean, it's it's pretty cool, and I guess the Kickstarter did great. Um, and the other kind of neat thing about it is, um, like the first issue has a variant cover from Art Germ, Stanley Lau. Um, their preview book had a really really kick-ass Jay Lee um, cover um, I had never seen, and there's blank sketch covers and all this neat stuff. So. I'm actually going to contact my editor today because I want to get that Jay Lee cover um, and uh, also some blank sketch covers so I have them and, and uh, you know, kind of try to help promote their project. I'm not sure how Kickstarter comics work in terms of um, availability. Like, I don't, I don't fully understand, like, if the book ever goes on sale to, like, the general public or if only the people that um, did the Kickstarter get them. I don't know. So we'll see. I'll find out and I'll let everyone know. Um, but uh, yeah, Brian is, uh, he's penciling it and coloring it and then I'm inking it. And uh, he's always really fun to collaborate with. I kind of feel like he's always a good opportunity to learn because he's so adventurous with technique and like his coloring is really, really good too. And uh, it's inspiring to see him color this stuff. And his storytelling too is, is pretty pretty cool. So it's it affects me, you know, um, in good ways. Like being around that. I mean, camera, yeah. Again, these videos tend to shoot a little darker than what I'm seeing in person. So I generally will um, put a. I'll, I'll snap a few photos and then pick a good one and add it up to um, Patreon and you can go over there and just check it out for free um, and see uh, kind of the, the day's progress. And then Thursday I'm going to do, I'm pretty sure, a drawing video. Still, I still feel kind of out of it, out of it honestly. I mean, it was, I just did so much work over the last like three or four weeks. I'm kind of like trying to just turn back into a normal person as much as possible um so but that's my goal is i'll go through the comments and see what people had suggested and we'll start to break down um character and uh it should be fun it'll be really fun and then i'm working on um samples that i, I can't really show yet and that, that's why i was saying i'm gonna um for, for drawing videos for the week, um, instead of doing the on, creating the comic book online, I'm gonna I'll merge into I'm um, doing those drawing videos just for the time being, and then once I um, land up the one of these gigs that I'm trying out for, hopefully, um, like I said, I'm keeping a pretty I'm I'm going into it as I'm gonna get it. <laughs> I'm nearly sure I'll get hired. Honestly, uh, I I feel pretty confident that I will. So that'll be good because that'll get me out of the inking track and as long as I can stay out of it and make a decent living then um, we're going to be golden and then I'll, I'll come back and then that's what I'll do is the celebration will be is we'll do that online comic book um, 
but yeah, I need I need to get work. And if the the problem is is that once this Ryan Benjamin job is over, if I get an, if I were to get another inking job, it could just be super time consuming, and then I would have no time um, to work on my own stuff, and that scares me. So that that's why I need I need to pull the trigger and use this time appropriately. So these lines are kind of like, they're going thin to thick, or thicker, thick to thin. So I kind of, I kind of scrape them a little bit more at the bottom and, and get a, a bit of a taper on the line. And then as I go further up the line, I'm, I'm using less pressure. spot because it's like fairly dark and again the the survival of this series is going to totally depend on comments and likes moving forward so um i'm not going to set a like goal to this week but um if next week i'm just if it's just kind of percolating it at like a low pulse i'll probably put this thing on ice and and we'll we'll just we'll move into something else something else to do with inking um, I probably will ultimately finish this little blue line at some point just trying to keep some of this it's a fairly dark area but he has like little areas of uh, kind of breathing room in here so I'm just trying to capture a bit of that look and again, I don't go line for line on it. It would just be a little too slow to try to completely um, c copy what he has down in a YouTube video. I mean, we'd really, really kind of grind to a halt. It could be done, though, but um, I don't think that the, the value, educational value, would, would um, you know, it doesn't benefit it that much for me to go that, that slow. So I just kind of try to pass through the areas and sort of show you what it looks like and... The key is this is an important white line that is this this uh, beaker kind of cutting through here. So I need to make sure that it's dark enough that that line shows up the most. It may not read on the camera that way, but it's more important than the um, the little gaps of white that are going through here. Yeah, hopefully everyone's working away on something creative and exciting in their day. If not, it's always a good time to start it. Um, and uh, yeah, just kind of go for something. Come up with like a plan. Check out my last two journey of a thousand miles. I think there's some good stuff in there that might help people. Um, if you if you don't have a schedule, um, if uh, you know. So you can understand the workload, and I kind of talk about like how to pick um, an art delivery that that will be manageable for you, how to manage your time and make time, and it's important stuff, you know, it really is because any schedule can work as long as it's consistent, and there are times when you're going to get pulled out of that, um, but. Even a slow, like a very, very slow artist that, say, could only do a page every week or two, if you are consistent with that, then people can work around that because they know, okay, this this artist takes a week to do a cover, but when we get the cover, it's really, really nice. And then if every week you do a cover for, for different companies, you've done, you know, 50-some-odd covers, and... You're creating a consistent body of work that's um, got sort of a tangible pulse. The, the problem is, is don't be someone that's inconsistent. Where uh, you know you do three three things and then you vanish for seven months, and and because um, no one can really follow it. And and there's too many 
opportunities to follow other things now, and nobody really has the patience. I mean, they'll, they'll stick around if you're really good, but, you know, just in general, I think it's better off to have whatever, whatever you do be consistent. Because the last thing you want to do is you don't want to step out of the track of, of delivering stuff that people are into and then coming back, you know, a year and a half later and, and, uh, your crowd's moved on and, and all of a sudden you can't get it back. Cause I've seen that happen to people. Um, a pretty big Marvel artist sort of did that. And, uh, I don't, I don't think that they've ever really bounced back to the level of popularity that they had, um, before that. And also, if you don't draw, your skills will, will diminish. I mean, that's just the reality of it is, is, is uh, what you put into your work is what you're going to get out of it. And uh, if, you, if you're not nurturing it and, and uh, exercising those muscles, they will atrophy. And then you've got another problem on your hands. You've, <laughs> you've dispersed the crowd that was into your work and then you come back and you don't draw as well that's it's like it's pretty it, that's not a good combo at all snib actually works a little better um, going backwards sometimes meaning um, thin to thick seems to be more of a trait that it excels at than going th thick to thin and it could be my inexperience with it it could be the paper it could be a combination of things but I'm just finding that um, it, t it seems to want to darkening this area a bit. I don't know how dark it's reading on the camera for you, but there's little gaps of, of like white in here that, that look nice, but it needs a little more oomph. Actually, I'm going to switch to a Hunt 102 for a second. I want to see something. I have a, like a decent 102 right now. And there's nothing wrong with switching tools, you know, while you're working on a piece. Um, you know, the only ones that you maybe want to be careful of are marker can sometimes look, the ink looks different than India ink. And so you don't want like, you know, little purple areas or blue areas or areas that just look kind of very translucent and not in an appealing way. But, you know, it, it doesn't matter that much. I mean, when you scan it and turn it into a grayscale file, it probably isn't going to be noticeable. And you can always hit it with the dodge tool to sort of balance things out, dodge and burn, um, to, uh, get kind of a harmony, um, like Mignola has very watery blacks, but, um, a lot of times when you see it in the book, you wouldn't really know that unless you see black and white, uh, copies of his work. the side of a book, like some pages probably or something over here. Okay, now what do we got here? This looks like a little beaker. It's, I don't really have um, reference out for what this piece looked like, finished inks. I mean, obviously the, this, the underdrawing is, but um, a little difficult to see what's going on here. It looks like it's got a bit of a pointy edge. Um, And, and a lot of people are heading into summer right now, so hopefully uh, that means free time for some some of you to to draw more. You know, if you're in school, I always took summer classes like in college, though, but um, not a ton, but usually like probably two, I think. If you're in high school, then you got hopefully a full summer. This. 
again, this is, you kind of want to be careful because, again, it was, it's real tempting for me to go and sort of do the outline of this thing. And I can kind of see that he did it a little bit more on this particular thing. But even still, it's a little, the, the line is a little bouncy and it could be the printout, but... You can see how much commitment goes into doing something like this. And again, we're, we're only really inking it. I mean, Bernie actually laid these things out and penciled them and then inked them. I mean, that's your, you know, doubling, tripling your the, the amount of time something like this would take. And, and he was in some ways inking it, I'm sure, slower. Because like I said, I rush a little bit for the YouTube video just to kind of get it in so I don't I don't I don't um, like freeze up on areas or try to like sit and sort of decipher something I kind of look real quick and just make a quick decision on what would get the you know just cl close to what is going on here but I don't have to have an exact replica and again if you you know if, if you want to do a piece like this you're going to want to put more care into it ultimately depending on the level of tightness that you want because the, the loose can look good too yeah you know, a lot of times people ask me to like critique their inks and I'm not that particular about inks honestly um, you know I think that they think that I I'm looking for a particular thing but I, I just I feel like everybody has a, a, a style to offer, and as long as something doesn't look like drawn wrong, um, you know, or, or something clearly went wrong in the inks that probably anyone could point out, um, you know, usually it's it's all good. I think unless you know that they're going for a specific look, like they're trying to ink like someone else or. But even within like a style like this, where we're we're doing a kind of a study of rights and um, you're what you're learning is you're just learning a language that you can kind of like create your own slang of. The lines start to thin out here a little bit. Like there's a little more. There's a, a bit of a it's probably a shadow under a shelf is what he's showing. Something like that more gaps of white through here. These lines go this way. Mm. This is always an interesting way to start the morning. <laughs> <laughs> like what's the best way to warm up like work on a Bernie Wrights and Frankenstein thing that'll be a good warm up okay the ink is a little wet down there so I'm gonna do this real quick but I'll try to work through this real fast oh you know what I'm gonna grab that other nib my July 291 boom chicka boom Yeah, this tears the paper a tiny bit more because it's it's a little sharper. But it's as long as you're mindful of it. I gotta clean my nib off a little bit. It's got a little paper. Based on the originals that I saw of the Frankenstein stuff, it looked like Bernie was working on on pretty pretty thick illustration board. So it wouldn't be comic book paper that they're inked on, drawn on. I could be wrong with that, but that, the, based on what I saw, um, I, I've seen a few of them in person at uh, Comic Con. Quite a few, or I think he had maybe five of them, five or six. But it wasn't something that I was sp specifically looking for when I was, I when I saw him, I wasn't expecting to like see him. It was like I was just walking through the room, and all of a sudden it was like, oh my god. The Sard dealers got, or it was um, one of the auction houses had them, and uh, 
Yeah, it was unexpected. Like I said, I was kind of like, I was more floored by the images than looking at the paper. But I did snap photos, but it's difficult to tell because they're straight on. So it's like you can't, I, I don't, I'm not sure I'll be able to notice the, the thickness of the board. Meaning, is it paper or is it actually like on like a, not, I don't know if cardstock would be the right term, but... Mm -hmm. What time is it? Hey, 25 minutes and I will go a little bit longer. I'll take it to 33, it's fine. I can't actually go to the printer until about 10.15 or 10.30, they're not open. So, I've got some time to kill. But see, today I'm going back into my work cycle and what's the first thing that goes out the window is drawing in the morning. If you watch my last Journey of a Thousand Miles, I talk about you know, ha having a schedule and why it's so important to have it because, you know, you can see how quickly you drift out of it, but knowing that you have a schedule can force you to take stock of how you're handling your day and using your time because time is such a valuable commodity for artists because everything that you do even though it's, it's um, you know, an artistic endeavor, somebody probably wants it somewhere. <laughs> they want it done, or they want to see progress. I woke up so early this morning. I like I woke up at like 5:15 and my allergies were killing me. And uh I never went back to bed, but that's early. I... But it's it's allergy season where I live. I guess it's for everyone. Luckily, it's not super hot here yet, but it is heating up. I'm in San Diego. But I heard Arizona is like super hot right now. These are like little, um, kind of like pleats on the the robe that he has over him, like kind of one of those old like piratey sort of shirts. It's like a, it's like draped over him. So there's like, um, if if uh, kind of like like this sort of thing is going on, but he only drew the shadow areas. So it's like what you get is you get this space where where the line is thin. He just omitted it, um, and. Uh, Gotta wait for this to dry for a second. Mm -mm -mm. What time is it? 28. Okay. We're doing, we're doing all right. I'm pretty excited about doing these um, portfolios for um, these job opportunities. Like I said, I can't really go into detail on it, but um, it should be fun. And, and it, it's all storytelling, like like pages, so. But yeah, there's a lot of opportunity out there for artists, man. Like like uh if you want to create your own luck, start start looking around, because I'm telling you, you've got the big two, DC and Marvel, are really, I think, they're going for it right now. Marvel needs to like DC is is really on a roll, and then Marvel generally there's a kind of this ping pong effect where they kind of go back and forth with things but it's pretty interesting and and uh i'm gonna try to like follow not, not just that but kind of like all the companies and what everyone's up to because it's pretty interesting but yeah it's a it's a competitive time like the the variant cover market is blowing up with all these batman 50 um exclusive covers it's, it's trippy like like there's definitely something going on there's something in the air <laughs> <laughs> but you know these are the times where like if you've done your hard work and you're ready to go you can leap into a lot of opportunities especially I think for interior artists like I think that they're, they're, um, you know the cover thing is so hot 
a lot of people are focusing their energy on that. But what does that do? Well, that opens up interiors of books. You know, like the companies, they're like, well, we've got 25 artists tied up doing, you know, gatefold covers for blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, ultimately there are, there are comic books that need to be drawn. So if you've got that skill set, you could potentially be highly in demand, you know? So, it's something to consider. What time is it? 30. Wow, time goes slow. It's weird. Like, some, some of these areas go faster than I think, and some go, feel slower. Again, I think you can really appreciate, like, how long something like this would take to do. It's, no joke. Some rights and books that you may want to look for would be um, the studio book, which is Bernie, Barry Windsor Smith, Michael Kaluta, and Jeffrey Catherine Jones. Um, another one is the Frankenstein book. Um, he also did a second Frankenstein book. Um, and uh, a look back I, if I didn't say that it was the first one I was thinking of but I, I, I'm under the impression that that's out of print and kind of expensive um, there's also there's a book called sort of like the Frankenstein unused pieces um, it can be kind of expensive I don't actually even have that one I've seen it um, it's not a real thick book um but uh, there is that out there. And then he did Swamp Thing. Oh, and um, IDW did an artist, uh, or uh, what do they call it? Artifact edition of Wrightson's work, so... It's another thing you can look at. And I was going to say, you know, because um, I, I show a lot of those artist edition books. Believe it or not, as expensive as those books are, they're a good value. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to explain it really, really fast and we'll end this video. So an artist edition will generally run you about $100. But they're generally about 215, 220 pages, maybe a bit more. Um, you know, if you break it down, like a, what a comic book is like 5 bucks, and it's 20 pages of interior art. So... 100 pages is going to cost you, 100 pages of comic art would be 5 books, so that's 25 bucks. So for $50 you would get about 200 pages of comic art, and for an extra 50 bucks you get it double the size, hardcover, all shot off the original art that they have to like literally scour the globe to find these pieces. It's not like all this stuff is sitting in one spot or the scans all exist at some like magical like, you know file cabinet i mean they actually go out and acquire all this stuff it's a lot of work there's been a few books that they have where um you know they maybe get lucky and are able to deal directly with the artist but a lot of times you know artists sell this stuff and and they don't have the pieces anymore and all of a sudden you've got six pages of a story but you need the other four and and it's like all right well when did they originally sell it's a really fascinating thing my friend scott uh doombeer kind of um he's created a, a, a big part of what this market is and um he's highly awarded for the work that he's done he's, he's won i don't even know how many eisners for the books but uh yeah i mean so it's a pretty amazing thing so you know what i'm more than willing to pay the extra 50 bucks for one scans off the original art the big size of the book and um all the educational value that you get out of them is just, it's really, really unmatched. So I, I highly recommend them for artists is, you know, watch some YouTube videos and get an idea of what's out there and, uh, and grab, I'm going to pull the thing out of the phone and, uh, well, out of the holder and we'll check this thing out. I'm going to put it in the sunlight a little bit. Oh, I don't know if that's going to work. Um, again, I'll, I'll take a photo. So this is what we've got. This is the whole piece. Very, very fun, very cool. And again, smash the like, 
post a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. And uh, do you want to see this continue or should we move on to something else? I need to know. All right. Have a great day and uh, be creative and, uh, you know, get on a schedule and try to stay on it. I know it's hard. It's a challenging thing, but it will really, really help you move forward with uh, your art goals. Okay. All right. Have a great day. Check out my Patreon. You can find some photos of this. All right. Bye.